there are a number of things I want to say here, so please bear with me. Um, China. I want to talk about the Chinese regime and why this thing really, really needs to be a game changer. Let's look at what's happened. We have had well over 5,000 deaths. That's just those reported in the hospital. Um, the Prime Minister is sick. Um, half his cabinet, it seems, have become sick. We are facing the biggest post-war crisis, basically. Um, and something most of us have never experienced before. So this has to be a wake-up call. Um, now, I do believe that each government will be judged on its own response to this, and there may be legitimate criticism of the British government that we didn't go into lockdown earlier. There will be legitimate criticism of the American government and Trump's reckless rhetoric. There will be a legitimate criticism of a lot of governments, so every government is going to be judged on its own response. But we cannot get around the fact that this began in China. And how did the Chinese regime respond? They responded by punishing Dr. Li Wenliang and others for um, spreading false rumours, making false comments, actually. Now, the Commons Foreign Affairs Select Committee, which is chaired by the Conservative MP Tom Turgenhat, has said that um, this information about the pandemic spread is costing lives. I'm just reading out from the Daily Mirror here and pampering the fight against the disease. MPs have warned. Um, MPs also accused Iran and Russia of spreading fake news about COVID-19. The main criticism, however, was reserved for China, highlighting the way Li Wenliang, the first uh, the doctor in Wuhan who first raised the alarm about the new disease, was forced to confess to making false comments before his death from the virus in February. Such deliberate misleading of the World Health Organization and scientists in other countries obscured analysis in the early stages of the pandemic. Um, it's essential that the government issues clear and transparent messages at home to confront, confront and reboot dis disinformation spread by foreign powers. Instead, Beijing sought to obfuscate over what was really happening, the committee added. And Chairman Tom Turgenhat said, rather than helping countries prepare a swift response, they manipulated vital information about the virus in order to protect the regime's image. And he's absolutely right. That's what they've done. Um, so let's look at the history of this. Um, after the SARS pandemic, um, they did temporarily close those notorious wet markets, but then they just reopened them again. And this was actually a strategy that the communist regime, regime used after the Great Chinese Famine, caused directly by Mao's policies, uh, the worst famine in human history, up to 36 million deaths. So the wet markets were brought in after that as a way to rely on um, other foodstuffs so that there'd be sort of a... So there may even have been good intentions, although I, I temper that very carefully, um, in the beginning. But the point is, they clearly haven't learned a lesson from SARS. Now, the scientific consensus says that this pandemic most likely began from the wet market in Wuhan, but uh, the report also continues. Ministers fear the coronavirus pandemic might have been caused by a leak from a Chinese laboratory in Wuhan. While the balance of scientific advice remains that coronavirus was first transmitted to humans from a live animal market, a leak from a laboratory in the city is no longer being discounted. Frankly, I wouldn't put anything past the Chinese regime. Uh, another article says Britain should sue China for 351 billion in coronavirus compensation. A report says this isn't just some hot air from a shock job. This is actually a government report. A study, uh, well, excuse me, a uh, think tank report. A study by Foreign Affairs Think Tank, the Henry Jackson Society, estimated the cost of COVID 19 to the G7 nations to be 3.2 trillion. The UK share of the loss was put 351 billion. The report due to be published today accuses Beijing of initially trying to cover up the outbreak. That's exactly what they've done. Delaying um, efforts to curb its spread. It says the truth is that China is responsible for COVID-19 and if legal claims are brought against Beijing, they could amount to trillions of pounds. Now, I'm not naive. China will never pay that. That goes without saying. They'll claim that they're being stigmatised. They'll never pay it. But it would be a symbolic move. It would be a symbolic move that we are really waking up to the fact that we cannot trust this regime. 
So I really think several things have to come out. This has to be a game changer in how we deal with China. It has to be. I mean, the Prime Minister, my goodness, he had suffered personally from this. We don't even know how serious his condition is. I mean, if he dies, he will be the first Prime Minister to die in office since Lord Palmerston in 1865. Um, and we've had a, a, a tragedy in this country. Thousands and thousands of people have died. That thousands of families have suffered. Um, so we really need to look at what's happening here. In the United States, they're talking about their Pearl Harbor moment, the September 11th moment. Over 10,000 deaths in that country. Look at Italy, 15,000 deaths. Spain, over 12,000 deaths. This is actually a humanitarian crisis in developed countries. Um, but if this isn't a wake-up call to the true nature of the Chinese regime, I really don't know what is. So what can we do? We need to start seriously looking at it now. Uh, the thing about suing China sounds almost like something Trump would say, but actually there is definitely a mandate for that. Of course, China will never pay, but that isn't the point. It would be sending out a message. Um, I mean, this is going to cost a major recession. So. This is going to go beyond the coronavirus, actually. Uh, we absolutely have to cancel the Huawei deal. That's a no-brainer. We can look at Japan and South Korea for digital technology. I don't know why we've been overly relying on China. Uh, Ofcom needs to be shamed in the taking action against CGTN and RT, both networks that are um, malevolent influences on this country. CGTN has aired forced confessions you know, I've spoken out about this repeatedly. I've said it in my videos. I launched that petition, which, by the way, you can still sign. Um, it's on change.org, and the petition is um, demand Ofcom revoke CGTN's license. I'll try and put a link on this video. Um, they've no excuse for not acting. I mean, CGTN has aired force confessions, including of a British citizen, Peter Humphrey, who's an investigative journalist. Um, that's basically amounting to being complicit in torture. Um, RT. RT should have been kicked out a long time ago. Their response to the Salisbury attack was ridicule, even though two British nationals died. Um, RT spreads conspiracy theories. It is only interested in making the West look bad, or at least um, pushing this constant narrative of West bad, Russia good. RT is a toxic influence, and I really don't have respect for the idiots, the youthful idiots who think it's just an alternative opinion. Oh, I don't watch mainstream media, so let's go to RT. Uh, if you want to be a mindless drone and believe everything Putin News tells you, then go ahead and do that. But some of us can see for it for what it is. I hear RT, and I'm increasingly contemptuous of uh, CGTN as well, because now they are pushing this lie this narrative that, oh, look how wonderful the Chinese government's been, look at how their actions have helped the Chinese people, we're all in it together. Except they punished the doctors and scientists who warned about this. If they hadn't taken that approach, it could have been contained as a local pandemic rather than a global pandemic from which we're all suffering. Um, and, you know, that that's what they they done, and now they are actually spreading conspiracy theories against the West. I was disgusted by what I saw on Weibo the other day, uh, where the likes of Beijing Youth Daily are actually blaming biased Western media who are trying to stigmatize China. China, or rather the Chinese regime, does a pretty damn good job of stigmatizing itself. Um, I think we should seriously look at expelling the ambassador. That would be an escalation. It would be a drastic step, usually only done in times of war. But really, if we look at what happened in Hong Kong last year, if we look at the coronavirus situation this year, I don't know what else China needs to do other than invading this country for such a situation to happen. You know, long gone are the days when David Cameron and George Osborne so naively um, spoke about the golden era of Sino-British relations. That was, it was a facade. And it was a gamble that they took. They thought, okay, well, 
will downplay it on human rights, will downplay criticism of China because we need the trade after the Great Recession. Um, but they went way too far with that. Um, the danger about overly relying on China is it puts us into a position where it is harder to criticise them. So we need to really, really get off Chinese reliance on Chinese goods as much as possible. I accept that isn't, we can't just automatically cut all connections, but there is a lot more that we can do. Um, so definitely we should seriously look at expelling the ambassador. We also need to be a lot more vocal in calling out their lies. You know, if it's okay for the Chinese regime to expel foreign journalists and to promote lies against the West, I mean, this is like, this is like a burglar going into someone's house, stealing things, returning one of the items and saying, oh, by the way, it's your fault for not locking the window. You know, this is, China is, the Chinese regime is a rogue regime. It's a threat to the world as far as I'm concerned. And we can't, we can't just monitor that in terms of, oh, well, it hasn't been this country or that country. We need to look at the consequences of this. Their lies are cost, have cost the world. It's a fact. Um, I think we also need to say that whilst, whilst, of course, racial attacks on individual Chinese citizens is wrong, I've been consistent about that. I get very angry with those who conflate criticism of the lying, corrupt Chinese regime with, um, with racism. That's a way to silence debate. All it does is play into the regime's hands. You know, going up to a Chinese person on the street and saying, go home, coronavirus, that is racial, right? But getting into a debate with a Chinese national about their lying government or criticizing that lying government is, is not racist at all. And Chinese nationals who come to the West and want to doggedly defend the regime, you know, they can't demand respect when they're not showing it. Um, so really, this has to be a game changer. It has to be. Really, really has to be. Um, and my fear is, in true British style, you know, we'll make, we'll have these rumblings of, oh, it has, things have to change and we'll just go back to normal. William Hague uh, spoke about how he had a piece saying in the Daily Telegraph saying China is now going to emerge as a more powerful adversary. So this is my thought. China is a powerful country. It's a very powerful country. I'm under no illusions about that. It's got a lot of influence on the world stage. But there is no reason why we have to give them more influence by just being um, allowing them to walk over us. And that's what we've been doing. The prevailing view in the West was that when China opened up under Deng Xiaoping economically, that political reforms would follow. That clearly hasn't happened. It's become more of a dictatorship under Emperor Xi. Um, and even if you want to naively say, oh, it's their internal affairs, their internal affairs are now affecting all of us. So even if you want to ignore the human rights issue, even if you want to ignore the fact that there are millions of weaker people in concentration camps, even if you want to ignore the fact that uh, criticising the regime over there can get you a charge of subverting state power or spreading malicious rumours, um, even if you want to ignore all human rights abuses, which I happen to believe are very important, if you want to ignore those things, then at least be patriotic, at least consider the sovereignty issue for this country, right? So if you're one of those people that doesn't care about the human rights factor, at least consider sovereignty for our country, because China cannot be trusted. Huawei absolutely can't be trusted. It doesn't matter what the CEO of Huawei says, because they are bound to give hand information over the, to the Chinese regime. Do you really think that a regime that's been lying to its own people for 72 years, including about this, you really think they are going to be honest with the rest of the world? This is a corrupt, nasty, totalitarian dictatorship that is only, only interested in maintaining power. It's the only thing the Communist Party cares about. They've lied about the true death toll. I mean, 3,300 dead in the whole of China? When other countries, much smaller countries, are getting many more deaths, it just isn't conceivable. So I think we need to be a lot more vocal. I need. I think we need to take concrete action. I think the government should even override Ofcom's jurisdiction on this, because this is an issue of national sovereignty. I think MI6 should be looking at it.
It's it's repulsive to me that CGTN can operate from its base in Chiswick, West London. I mean, granted, most British people probably don't watch it. I I have access to it because I've got a Sky TV connection. I've also got access to RT. Um, I shouldn't be able to. I shouldn't be able to see those channels. They should not be broadcast here. And if you're naive, they say, oh, what about free speech? Because, of course, the Chinese use this narrative. Oh, the West loves to talk about free speech, but they're denying our free speech. Free speech has responsibility. And you cannot have someone who is coerced into a profession and then say it's free speech. That's not free speech. That's uh, blatant human rights abuses. So... I think if we take more drastic measures, if we do get more vocal, of course China will have a tantrum. Of course they'll play the victim. Of course they'll probably retaliate. So if we pull out the, if we expel the Chinese ambassador, they might do likewise. But we've done it before. The May administration didn't get a lot right. I give her administration credit for taking a hard line on Russia. They expelled diplomats after the Salisbury attack. Now we need to do the same with the Chinese. And the Johnson administration can show it really is very patriotic and do that. Um, th this has to happen. We have to see a game changer. And to those who say I'm being xenophobic, all I can say is I take no pleasure from any of this. China's been a big part of my life. I've been there twice. I've worked there. I've lived there. Some of the most important people in my life have been Chinese. Right. So I take no pleasure from wanting to see a Cold War type situation with China, but they have forced us into this situation with their aggressive behavior. The so-called soft power is nothing of the sort. It's manipulative. It's deceptive. And it is definitely a, um, a malevolent influence. So no one should be fooled that China sending masks to Italy or Spain or Canada or the UK for the matter, it's some sort of humanitarian gesture. Like I say, it's a bit like a burglar going into a house and stealing 10 items and returning one item and saying, oh, you can have this back, look how gracious I am. All it is, is the Chinese regime trying to mitigate um, fallout, the disastrous fallout in their image, which they're entirely responsible for. If they hadn't been so arrogant in the first place, if they'd listened to Dr. Lee, I believe it's very possible that this could have been a localised epidemic and the rest of us wouldn't be suffering. So this must be a game changer. President Trump um, has got a lot of things wrong. His handling of this has been pretty reckless in many ways. But one thing, one of the few things that Trump has got right is he has taken a consistently tough line on China. And the Democrats, if they want to portray that as racism, they're being stupid. This is a time when parties need to get together. I don't care if it's Republican, Democratic, Labour, Conservative, um, in any country. All Western liberal democracies and other countries for that matter, you know, other countries that know the power of the Chinese regime has threatened them, the Philippines, Vietnam, you name it. There needs to be global pressure put on the Chinese regime to change their ways. They cannot demand respect on the global level whilst they're behaving this way. I mean, they will constantly defend their actions because they want to kind of make the mark. So they'll say, oh, we went through the century of humiliation. So now is our time to kind of, uh, well, now we're in charge. No way. Because if we give them an inch, they will take a mile. And I tell you, in 10 years or less, we are really going to start to see the internet controlled by the Chinese regime. So it won't just be a case of you have to be silent when you're there. We'll actually get into a situation where you can find you're criticizing the Chinese regime online and the comments mysteriously vanish because the big tech giants have been bought out by China. It's really a plausibility. So we really need to wake up to this. There are, um, there are voices who know what's going on on both sides of the Atlantic. Marco Rubio has been a consistent uh, voice for this. In Britain, Tom Turgenhat, um, my friend Benedict Rogers of Hong Kong Watch. Um, these are people who know what the Chinese regime is about. This is not about being xenophobic. This is not about attacking ordinary Chinese people. Although I do put the caveat, if ordinary Chinese people want to defend the regime, they have to expect a backlash. And it's those who want to chirp on about racism 
you know, if they're talking about racist attacks against individual Chinese, okay. But if they're saying criticizing the Chinese government, holding them responsible for what they've done is racist, they're just useful idiots. So I really, really think this has to be a turning point. The whole nation. We have to take a much harder line on China. Like I say, the May government done the right thing expelling Russian diplomats after Salisbury. Well, look what's happened. We're in the midst of a pandemic that's changing our lives. Thousands have died. The prime minister is sick. The country is in lockdown. This is a direct result of China covering that up. So, yeah, I do think we need to be sending out a strong message. If we don't do all of those things, we should at the very, very least be doing some of them. I'll be utterly disgusted if after this crisis, none of these things happen. It would be outrageous in the extreme. Um, it really would. So, um, it's difficult for me personally because... I do have Chinese friends and I I don't bring these things up, but if they ask my opinion, I'm not going to shrink away from it because I'm very angry about this. And I'll be totally honest, this, this has definitely made me uh, reflect on, on some of my friendships because some of those people, they are conditioned by the society that they're in and they will defend the government. And I, I may have to struggle to reconcile the two things. It's very difficult on a personal level, but I do care about my country. And I, um, I just feel this has to be a turning point. Because otherwise, the Chinese regime is going to come out of this thinking they've won. Thinking, oh, well, we had this pandemic. We've now managed to get into the driver's seat. Western nations are struggling and we get to emerge as uh, a as strong power. That cannot happen. China will remain a powerful country, but that power can be reined in. Okay, I don't believe that it's unlimited. Okay, the height of Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s was very powerful, very scary, but we reined it in. And I'm not saying China is about to invade other countries. I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I do believe that Chinese Communist Party is evil. I believe that. So um, something has to change. And it has to change sooner rather than later. So we need to get together. All um, liberal democracies have to get together and really take that seriously. And, you know, I cannot stand Trump. I think he's been a disaster. This is one thing he has got right. So Trudeau and Johnson and Macron and other leaders need to, instead of attacking Trump on China, they need to recognize that actually he might be onto something with this.